little bit. We're going to pretend that you guys aren't even there. You get to listen uh-huh. in on a live recording of your favorite podcast. And then after the show, maybe some of us, maybe all of us will stick around, hang out with the chat, all that jazz. Um, I'm going to start recording on my end. Okay. Record. Okay. So as soon as you guys are ready, we can get started. I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's do this. Wow. No no time to, to fuck around. These boys are ready. Okay. Okay. Well, we're already recording. Wouldn't want to waste any recording time. No, definitely not. <laughs> my, my computer's almost completely uh, full <laughs> at ca- to capacity from all of the uh, cat porn Shane Dawson sent me. <laughs> so so many terabytes of cat porn from Shane Dawson. All right. Cats, dog, dragons, goats. What bestiality does Mumkey want to stoop to next? Damn. <laughs> Maybe even human. Ooh, oh. oh, no. That, that rock man can chew on my hey, boulder hey. or a boner anytime. <laughs> How dare you? We'll get into that in a moment. Let me, I'll start the show. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to your favorite movie review podcast. That's right. The one and only Is It Kino. I am your host, Mumkey Jones. Join as always. For now, for now, always, maybe not in the future, one Mr. E. Rich McCoy. The never-ending podcast host, it's me. (laughs) And uh, our, uh, everybody's favorite third wheel, (laughs) one (laughs) Florian Himsel. Oh, no. I I feel that we're destined to do this forever, Batman. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you and I might be... Boys, (laughs) Boys, <laughs> uh, I think we have to address the uh, elef- elephant, the elephant in the room. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, we're, we're watching Dumbo finally. No, <laughs> never. <laughs> um, the elephant in the room is that we're never watching Dumbo. Yeah, no, oh, fuck no. Dumbo. I uh, I don't know the proper way to express this. Um, we're usually so jokey on this show, and it's it's just right. a, a laugh a minute. Uh, but we we have some. See, something that will change the face of Kino forever. Something that has me uh, genuinely saddened. Um, something yeah, um, that will uh, make it so that everybody listening at home will never want to listen to the podcast again. And Erich, oh, I think no. I think this is your news to give. Well, I think you majorly overestimate what people think of me uh, within the Kino community. Um, so I think my time on Kino has been a lot of fun for me. Um, I've had a great time talking about movies, shitting on movies, falling asleep during movies, uh, (laughs) doing all of these things. Um, Especially the falling asleep during movies part. That's some of the best shit I've ever done. Um, But I think my time on Kino has to come to an end or at the very least a uh, a temporary withdrawal. Now, let's let's clarify, I, I have a very long history of a messy podcast breakups. Right, Usually right. people interpret those as being my fault of me being too hard to work with. So just tell everybody that you're quitting because I was an asshole and I demanded too much of you. <laughs> I, I believe that I believe oh, what we've come up with is creative differences. <laughs> Now, um, I was really upset about that time Erich said the N-word, so I said he has to go. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go. It's, it's my time. No, um, Erich, uh, he's entering a new stage of his career, and mm. uh, he needs to uh, <laughs> separate himself from uh, some internet brands, perhaps. So uh, we, we have discussed oh, it. I gotta... Oh, oh wait, sorry. What are you saying, Florian? I, I got to call bullshit here. It's it's obvious that Ebridge is simply putting host before bros. He's just <laughs> fully emerging <laughs> himself in, in, in his new girlfriend, and he's he's letting go of old friends, just like you always see. And, well, that's, that's why terrible. I'm glad you'll never leave me, Florian. You're, uh, <laughs> yeah. you're a MGTOW for life. He's forever alone. <laughs> So uh, oh, we have decided, or at least Erich decided, that ev- uh, the Avengers Endgame episode mm-hmm. next month will be his final official hurrah on Is It Kino? But uh, he said it's always possible he'll pop in again in the future for things like Star Wars and John Wick mm-hmm. and all that. You fuckers think you can get rid of me. You, you'll never get rid of me. I'll um, always be back. Yeah. So th- this next month of uh, Kino with Erich is gonna be uh, every every no. time an episode ends, I'll say, "Wow, that's you know, one more Kino away from uh, the, the saddest moment in my uh, professional career." Erich. 
I was one Kino away from retirement. <laughs> oh, wait, are we going to get you killed before the Avengers Endgame <laughs> episode? Yes. Uh, he's going to make a great sacrifice to, to stop mm -hmm. the big nothing from consuming everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because speaking of which, I decided if Erich is leaving, I, I can't let him go without forcing him to watch my favorite movie that he has not yet mm -hmm. seen. Which is why today, instead of discussing us, which we all haven't seen yet, we'll probably do that next, we are discussing... Mm. One of my all-time favorite films, First Reformed. But what, Everich? What did you think uh, of? What did you think oh of damn. First Reformed? Oh, I, I already talked about First Reformed. Oh, okay. I want to talk about the Neverending Story. Oh, okay, yeah. We, we also watched the Neverending Story. Now, uh, it's now, all boys. The wrong movie again. Damn. Yeah, I watched the Neverending Story Part Three, starring Jack Black in his first feature film. And that's Wait, not is a, that real? That's fucking For real. Real. <laughs> that's a fucking Holy real shit. thing. I just said. I Guys, cannot wait to see that, wow. I have seen this film, The NeverEnding Story, probably 75 times. I have wow. a lot to say about it, but I also am insanely curious to hear the thoughts of uh, my, my two good friends who perhaps do not have the emotional attachment to the film that I have. Do I have mm -hmm. nostalgia goggles on? I'm about to find out. Erich, what did you think of The NeverEnding Story? Um, I can't say that I honestly understood A NeverEnding Story. But I can say that I loved Never Ending Story just for being a completely new, unique fantasy world, the likes of which I've never seen. The insanity of Falcor and the voice of Falcor <laughs> is nothing that anyone would ever make as a decision nowadays. Like you just you would just not see that voice actor being chosen for Falcor. Well and on, on the vo uh, on the note of the voice actor, I've got some behind uh, the scenes hot goss that's really gonna um, expand ooh. your mind and and You'll have a whole new lens to view the movie through once you find out Shit. who did the voice of Falcor, E. Rich. I've got oh, so many fuck. tidbits to show you how keno this film truly is. Oh my god. But, but, right, but continue I mean, your opening this, thoughts. This movie takes me back to a time in which there wasn't any CGI, and when there was any kind of CGI, it was this bullshit compositing, which is at, at its worst at the very end of the movie. Yeah, you can uh, see where... like the outline of the green screen at some point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's real bad. But um, <laughs> everything else, when it's a real thing, which most of the time Falco is a real thing, um, all of the different characters, and uh, I don't know whether they're giant puppets or what exactly they're doing, but like they all look incredible and amazing. And uh, Florian is probably going to say that they look awful, but uh, he's wrong. <laughs> no, this, this film was made in Germany by a German director. I think Florian will appreciate it for having the master race <laughs> involved in the production. Florian, what did you think of the film? Uh, I, I guess it was all right. I I started out, I, I guess when I was a little boy, my, my mom read the book to me. So wow. I guess I already have the nostalgia. I don't know if the film could live up to that. And it, I, I guess it's it's pretty good for its time, though. It's it's got some uh, a good bit of of impact culturally and everything. And yeah, I guess even it's, the it's Lonely Island they... even makes songs about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's... it's good what they achieve with, with these simple means, I guess. So that's good. All right. Okay. We got we got their opening little whatever the fuck you want to call these these the opinions of fools, folks. Allow me. <laughs> The huh? the never ending story master, the man who has recently read the first fifty pages of the book because I was like I gotta read the book sometime. Oh don't shit! I? <laughs> well, essentially what has happened here is you are like the dude at the beginning of this movie who gives us. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm the, the old bookshop keeper, book. and you're yeah, you're fucking yeah. Bastion. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think the best way for me to really articulate the levels of Kino that I don't think anybody else on Earth comprehends with this film. Like uh, uh, Erich said, upon his first viewing, he doesn't really understand what the fuck he just watched, and that is very much by design. This is an underrated mindfuck movie in the same sense of uh, things like your... Um, your uh, uh, Fight Clubs or your Inceptions or your Shutter Islands. This or your is your Donnie's Darko. Your Donnie's Darkos. <laughs> this movie, in my view is more meta than even Deadpool. It's the best kind of meta. Uh, yeah. And uh, w if you really wrap your mind around what's happening, it should give you an existential crisis of faith. <laughs> so, huh? <laughs> yeah, no, don't you worry. <laughs> Florian, Florian didn't even get it. He's just like, what do you mean? <laughs> I thought it was just a fun little adventure story. No, okay. <laughs> Let me take you through it. 
And folks at home, if you've never seen this, we're going to spoil the whole thing, but that's okay because you'll get a, an appreciation for the film before you go see it. Mm -hmm. The never-ending story begins with young Bastion. In the real world, I think they're pretending that it's like New York, but it was filmed in Germany, so the, the architecture does not really, yeah, <laughs> doesn't really uh, match up. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Florian, is that, does that look like outside your house, the, uh, the, the street <laughs> scenes? Uh, no, I, I don't have that much city going on. This is a very rural area here, so no. Uh, okay. We have young Bastion. He has his, his head in the clouds, they say. He, mm -hmm. he doesn't care about school. He's about 10 years old. He loves reading books, you know, and he has like 174 of them at home. And he, he can list them all off off the top of his head, all these adventures he's gone on in these books. He, you know, he would rather read a book than talk to other kids, play video games, go to class. That's the kind of kid he is. And his father has to keep reminding him, you need to keep your feet on the ground. There, this is a real world you can't use your imagination all the time. There are real world problems like, for example, Bullies. your mom is fucking dead. <laughs> oh, tragedy. Tragedy. Is this why Bastion is so isolated from the rest of the world? Because his poor mother died while he was at Is this a... why he, he literally has a psychotic break by the end of the movie and <laughs> yes. is imagining oh. terrorizing other children? <laughs> oh, don't. E. Rich, you, uh, <laughs> you again are misunderstanding what happens in this <laughs> film. Oh, wow. <laughs> That Are we is getting completely wrong still, damn. Oh, oh, buddy, just you fucking wait. Oh no! If only someone could explain this this great movie to me. I'm gonna explain it scene by scene. Saying. It's going to be very monotonous, but it, it's mm. very important. <laughs> the finest form of review. Go on. Yeah, no, it's it's. Trust me, trust me on this one. Sebastian, he's going to school, but uh oh, his bullies—they terrorize him. Poor Bastion. These three punk kids. Throw him in the garbage can. <laughs> Classic fucking 80s bullying. They throw him in the fucking <laughs> giant dumpster, sit down on the lid. He's on his way to school. Now he's going to smell like garbage. It's horrible. He gets yeah, out of the- They didn't even look who was in. They could have impaled him on some, some spikes or whatever. Well, thankfully, by the end of the film, Bastion also does not care about them getting impaled on spikes because they end up in the garbage <laughs> as well. <laughs> Which, right. and these these garbages in uh, New York, Germany seem to just be filled with like straw and hay, and there's like no actual garbage in them. <laughs> you like he sticks his head out, and his hair's full of fucking straw. <laughs> Is this a secret Assassin's Creed movie? <laughs> oh, it could oh. be. Yeah, Falcor jumps off a building and lands in the garbage at the end. Yeah. <laughs> He gets out of the garbage. Uh-oh. The bullies see him again. They chase him down. Bastion finds uh, a refuge inside a, a small bookstore that he's never been to before. Mm -hmm. Rings the bell. Walks in. There's a, uh, a, a, a cur cruddily, curdily, what's that word? E. Rich for like a mean old man. Um, um, uh, I, I, oh, I know I what you're talking about, but I can't. Crungingly, it. cruddingly. It's curmudgeonly. From yeah, that's it. Thank you for the yeah. the the uh, the yeah. man who is bilingual knows English better than <laughs> mm -hmm. us. The English teacher. <laughs> he's a he's an old man who hates children. He absolutely hates hates them. Not to be confused with Falcor the Luck Dragon, who famously says in this film, "I like children," and it's very very creepy. <laughs> Oh, no, I'm getting flashbacks of the Michael Jackson uh, oh, documentary. Oh, it just likes to be scratched behind the ear by children, all right? It's it's so good. It's, it's a, it, he orgasms. You know that a film is pure and innocent when the writer doesn't see an issue with putting in a line, I like children. They're like, oh, no, yeah, this is fine. Mm -hmm. Nobody would misconstrue this story. But this old man in the bookstore, the owner, hates kids. And this man is reading a huge book with a stylized stencil of two snakes wrapping around and eating each other on it, called The Never-Ending Story. Smash cut to credits! Huh. <laughs> we got a Damn. title, folks! Wasn't that, like, wasn't that like five snakes or something? No, it's just... No, it's it, two. Yeah, it's two. Wrapping around really? each other and shit, yeah. It's pretty long. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most unrealistic part of the movie. <laughs> It's an infinity symbol. Oh, <laughs> it's the never-ending story. The old man says, Kid, this is called a book. You ever heard of a book before with your fucking video games? And I'm thinking, this came out in... Your robots and your bleep warps. Yeah. yeah, this came out in 1984. How many video games would this kid have? <laughs> was, was, yeah. Is that a, a big thing? Like, Pong? Yeah, was he going to like the arcade all the time? 
<laughs> but more importantly, would would kids nowadays even have to read books anymore? Do they have any relationship to books? Because I I had no relationship to books when I was young, and and that was way way before. Florian, let mm. me ask you this. And first of all, you just said that your mom read this book to you, so I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, second I of all, you did have that ratio. Uh, second I never of all, read them myself. Uh, let me ask you this, Florian. In your apartment where you live alone, how many physical books are in your apartment right now? Like two or three. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! What are they? Like the bi the Bible, the Quran, and the Torah? <laughs> like like old programming books that I used. To Way oh, back. Plus, I, have, plus, plus. I haven't looked at them for, for like 10 years. E I don't know why I bought them. I wonder uh, who has more books between you and I. How many books do you have uh, in your apartment? In my apartment, uh, I'm going to say anywhere from 50 to 100. Okay. And, uh, but 50 I got to 100? That's, that's a big fucking uh, gap between those two numbers. But many more in storage because oh, I've got okay. a, like a shit ton in storage. Yeah, I think we'd be a pretty close comparison. I've got Jesus, uh, so many books. We've got two and a half bookshelves completely full in our nice. house. Nice. They're not nice. all my books. Some of them are Sheepover's books. But never mm -hmm. mind. Bastion informs this this judgmental old man reading the never ending story. No! I love books. Books are my favorite thing. They're the reason why I live. And the old man's like, oh, really? Well. This book I got right here, the Never Ending Story. It's unlike Name three books. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's not like your comic books. This is a. This is a book that stays with you. It changes the world around you. You're not. This book you're not ready for. And he says, "I don't read comic books. I read Treasure Forged Island, Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea." And he's listing off all, all the books. He says. <laughs> so the old man with the book gets a phone call. And Bastion, he's so intrigued now by this never-ending story. What could it be? How could a book be more impactful than 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, you rich? I don't know. So young um, Bastion, he steals the book, runs out of the store. And the old man, you think, oh, he's going to be pissed, right? No. No. He gets a big old smile and sees that Bastion left him a note saying, don't worry, I'll return the book. But is he ever going to do that? Will he have the oh, opportunity no. to do that before his entire world is deconstructed on a cellular level? We have yet to find out. Probably not. Damn. No, probably not. Well, he'll probably handle it very poorly and throw it to the floor and, and all such things. We are three minutes into the film. <laughs> so wait, what happens? What happens if he would just stop reading the book and then just throw it down? What would happen to Fantasia then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, well, we'll get <laughs> well, to that. Obviously, it would just okay. pause like a video game. No, we'll, we'll get it, to that because I, be I don't think I don't think he has the option to because, as the the roaring storm outside his school would suggest, the the mm -hmm. world of the book and the real world are uh, intertwining so much that the only way to stop the nothing from destroying his existence is to conclude the story. But, we, but we're getting way ahead of ourselves, my friends. Mm -hmm. So Bastion, he goes to school. He looks into his classroom, sees how, how boring and monotonous it is. Oh, sitting in, in rows and columns like a bunch of cattle while this boring teacher, Mr. E. Rich, drones yeah. on and on about history. Who fucking cares? <laughs> boring. I'm going to sneak into the, the big spooky attic at my public school. <laughs> This is an attic full Where of... Where the fuck is he? he? He sneaks into the attic of his school. It's full of human skeletons, uh, like wolf carcasses, <laughs> spider webs, cobwebs, um, monster costumes. Why is this in, in the attic of an elementary school? There's like a uh, cage? Like a cage Halloween. to keep a monster in? <laughs> e. Rich, have you ever... In your, all your times going to schools, so have you ever seen an attic mm -hmm. like this? No. I've never seen any attics, but... No, what? I've never seen an attic like this. You've met Asperger. You've seen an addict before. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> what? Was that not funny enough for you, e bitch McSoy? Well, do they, do they have addicts at all? How does that make sense? No! The schools don't have addicts. They gotta have really? storage they somewhere. Me, at least. I mean, maybe in New York, Germany, they do. <laughs> Why so, do they store all the balls for physical education? Good question. Good question. <laughs> so this is when the movie branches off and we have two simultaneous stories. We have the real world of young Bastion skipping class, hiding up in the attic of the school, reading the book. And then the movie also becomes primarily the story 
of the book that he's reading. And this story takes place in the magical land of Fantasia, which in the book is called Fantastica, which is, I think, it's pretty fucking retarded. <laughs> um, I'm happy that uh, they changed it in the movie to Fantasia, because Fantastica just sounds stupid. Yeah, I'm glad it's not Fantastica. Instead, it's the name of a, of a Disney movie. Hmm. Well, I'll say this. When you consider the metaphor of what Fantasia represents, and you have direct lines of dialogue, like um, like uh, the the nothing is um, the emptiness in a man's soul, and it's going to destroy Fantasia. It's more of a the, the oh, metaphor wow. of uh, like depression destroying your uh, your sense of imagination and fantasy is more there. When you when you change it to Fantastica, it, there's not like the direct. Um, uh, bare level sense of metaphor there. It's like, oh, this the nothing will destroy Fantastica. What? What? What is Wait, that? Is Fantasia actually a word that means something? Well, it, it sounds like fantasy, whereas Fantastica just sounds like right. fantastic. And fantasy is something that we can have in our minds, where and and, and that's the that threat sense. of uh, the without these books, our sense of fantasy will be lost. Whereas Fantastic is like, oh, I'm going to lose a sense of. The world being fantastic? What the hell are you talking about? So uh, mm. that's that's the first of many positive changes from the book to the film. Wow. But the story of Fantasia begins. We don't know what's going on. We have these strange creatures meeting together in the woods. We have uh, uh, a little uh, a knob, knob guy. He's like, uh, <laughs> we have like the Indian Willy Wonka, whose voice is very poorly dubbed into the film and not really matching mm -hmm. up to his lips. Who rides what on in the a... fuck is going on here? <laughs> I still don't know what wow. the fuck these people were talking about. Okay, the entire so time. Uh, here, let's uh, let's hand it over to Erich. You explain what what yeah. <laughs> the scene is and what you're confused about, and then I'll fill in the gaps. A rock dude comes over and sits down, and he's like a, a giant. He's like he's as big as a mountain, five hundred times bigger than them. <laughs> and he, and he's he grabs... riding on a. Uh, oh, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. He grabs a oh yeah he's riding on what must be a scooter. Or something. He's riding a bike that is also made of rocks. Yeah, and he reaches down and rips a huge fucking chunk of like rock out of the ground, <laughs> and then just starts eating it. And everyone is kind of freaking out. They're like not like. <laughs> yeah. It would be like if a raccoon just came over and started to like go through a my bag. Or something. He's like, what the fuck? But if the yeah, if the but, raccoon was as big as a mountain. A Godzilla raccoon, hmm. <laughs> and, and who are the characters who are freaking out about this rock biter? Yeah, like there's an Indian Willy Wonka, there's like a goblin. Who rides on a racing fucker. snail, don't forget about that. Yeah, there's a racing snail, there's a bat, Batman? <laughs> yeah, it's like a, a weird little man who flies mm -hmm. around with his big bat. Yeah, Like yeah. a paraglider. And is there anybody else? Um, in the book, Got there's, in one. <laughs> in the book there's another one, but I guess here it's just uh, those okay. two, okay. Uh, I yeah, like I'm mixing it up. Someone else? Hmm. Uh, Guess not. No, I don't think so. Not in the movie. So, uh, Everidge, do you understand what <laughs> you said? You didn't know what they were talking about. Uh, yeah. What, what is your confusion here? What? What's the like? Is this rock thing their friend? No. Is he welcome? No, all three of these guys are meeting for the first time. Wait, oh my you, God. What are you None really of them are friends. Of understanding them. Well, it, it, so Florian, he's watched it, it seventy-five times. He's had multiple. Well, Florian has seen it as many times as you. So, uh, Florian, what do you well, think these three twice. are doing? Well, I mean, I know what happens. It, <laughs> the well, I mean, they were all sent because the the big nothing is consuming the world, so they Thank were sent you. to the mm -hmm. center of the world to, to, well, I guess warn the, the empress, but then they mm. don't realize that the rock dude is also. <laughs> sent for that reason, I guess. Yeah, because he is he is such an abomination. He's he's eating that rock, but he's not really eating it. He's just just <laughs> destroying it and then it's like it Cookie Monster, <laughs> where Cookie Monster doesn't eat any <laughs> actual cookies. He just shoves cookies into his maw. Yeah, were, like, were you guys he actually uh, have anything? There. Were you guys impressed by the the puppetry of the giant rock man, or or the, the did it giant lose its rock charm? man looks incredible? Like okay. I can't believe that that's not an actual giant rock man. When I'm <laughs> Are you being sarcastic? 
<laughs> no, no, I think it's great. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I the puppetry in this film is, uh, I mean, it's up there with like Labyrinth and all those movies. It's so good. Like, I think it's better than Labyrinth because so often in Labyrinth, I just think, oh, these are obviously puppets. Yeah, there are scenes in uh, with Falcor where there have to be mm. at least fifty people operating Falcor at one time because there are oh so many. God. He's 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 life size. Because yeah, we have the little, we have a tray you next to him who's like, he's five and a half feet tall. This giant, giant dragon puppet is like <laughs> fucking 50 feet, and every part of him's like moving, he's like wagging his tail and shit. It's so crazy. But what insane German filmmakers were just like, <laughs> okay, we're going to make this giant puppet, we're going to make this giant puppet, let's do that a thousand more times and see <laughs> yeah. what happens. Uh, well, th they made one of my all-time favorite movies, so I'm glad they put in the effort. All the way back yeah. in 84. So yeah, as Florian was saying, the world of Fantasia is gigantic, and there are different uh, races of uh, creatures and, and people, mm -hmm. and, and most of them would never even meet each other. It's so big. But there is a, a strange thing called the nothing that is destroying the world, and the way they explain it is that the Rockbiter says... There was, or it was either the rock bite or one of the other ones. I think rock biter says, we had a lake. And the next day, thanks to the nothing, the lake was gone. And the Willy Wonka says, what, the, the lake dried up? And the rock man says, no, if the lake dried up, there would be a hole. At least a hole is something. There was nothing. And this is a very interesting metaphor and just a uh, plot device, this nothing where the world is literally just disappearing by uh, like a dark hole force and it's spreading mm. and destroying all of Fantasia. So uh, uh, agents are, are ambassadors from each land are being sent to the ivory tower where the childlike empress, the, the supreme god being of Fantasia resides. They all, they're all being sent there to warn her about this nothing and see what she can do to fix it. And as the book- But she's sick, right? Well, we don't know that yet. Oh. So, uh, as the book explains that um, Fantasia often, there are wars and, and, and different tribes hate each other. But the one thing yeah. every resident, every single person in Fantasia has in common is their love and admiration for the childlike empress. Which really reminded me of the ideal United States where ideally everybody, every single citizen would love Donald Trump. <laughs> but we just have we have these detractors like yep. me, Rich, who just refuse to love the childlike mm. empress Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> the childlike emperor Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Lou in the chat, uh, we're doing this live on Twitch, brings up a good point. If they remade this, I think the girl from Stranger Things would have to play the childlike empress. They uh, yeah. they look very similar. Damn. So after the rock biter and the hobgoblin man and uh, Indian Willy Wonka, who uh, <laughs> may maybe they. He might have had just a really bad accent because they very obviously dub in a white guy's voice over him. He's speaking. like if Willy Wonka and the the uh, the Oompa Loompa from Tim Burton's uh, <laughs> Willy Wonka and Chocolate Factory were like merged into one <laughs> being with like the voice of an intern <laughs> dubbed yeah, in at yeah. the last minute. This was a film that was in theaters and that was their dubbing job. I, I don't know what they were thinking. The body of an Indian man, the clothing of Willy Wonka, <laughs> and the voice of an intern. <laughs> But they realize, wait, but, why are we wasting time talking in the woods? Let's all get to the ivory tower post haste. And they take off. Mm -hmm. Were you going to say something, Florian? It's pretty cool that this is the way they establish it. Because, I, I mean, I guess they didn't establish the, the nothingness. And they only bring it up in, in, in this dialogue, I guess. Which is, is interesting. I, I feel that a modern movie would just show the nothingness consuming things. Right. Instead, they they have this this exchange, and then they forget about the nothingness, and they just be dazzled by this rock monster, and they're like, <laughs> "We know yeah. what happened to the rocks. You ate them." Yeah. <laughs> and that was so hilarious. <laughs> yeah, you, you get it's, some you get some comedy, you get some good character, and it has a payoff because I would argue one of the saddest speeches in film history is when we meet the Rock Man again. E. Rich, did, mm -hmm. were you brought to tears at the second coming of Rockman? We're not going to spoil it yet, but it's... What the, fuck, what the fuck was he saying? Oh, my God. Fuck you. <laughs> fuck so, you. Such a sleepy E. Rich, God man. damn it. It's so fucking sad, dude. <laughs> the <laughs> saddest part of this movie was when he walks into the swamp with his horse. Yeah, no, horse we'll get there. That's, that's the famous yeah, that scene that everybody has seen. <laughs> everybody right. knows the Artax scene. So they make, right. it, they make it to the ivory tower. 
and there's a meeting. And if you like the puppets before, we, we got all sorts the of uh, giant face people. Yeah, it's like a uh, floops uh, monsters from Spy yeah. Kids. We have floops uh, Madman help us save us. All of these crazy creatures and monsters represented by puppets and makeup, and it it's just really cool character and creature design. They're all assembled here at the Ivory Tower in the center of Fantasia, and um, I guess a, a black guy with a bunch of shit. Uh, painted on uh, his face uh he comes out <laughs> in the book he's a centaur but i guess they couldn't uh, combine a black Recorded man and, and a horse back in 1984 <laughs> well was he ba black in the book yeah he was a black guy with a white horse or like a zebra horse body they say well, damn you know, wow that makes That's sense cool. he comes out and says i understand that you all are here to warn us about the nothing and you need the childlike empress to save us all to save our world but unfortunately, the childlike empress has fallen ill, and we believe her illness may be directly related to the nothing. She cannot save us, but she has sent us out for a brave hero, the only one who can find a cure. If we can cure her, we can stop the nothing from destroying our world. And we sent for a, a brave warrior named Atreyu. And then Atreyu walks in, and everybody's like, Hold up! That can't be Atreyu! That's a little boy! Because Atreyu... That ain't no man. That ain't no man. And Atreyu, of course, is uh, a ripped little... I guess Indian, 12-year-old <laughs> Indian boy, who Wait. I think is a, a white guy who they're trying Native to make... American Indian. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it'd oh, be, uh, because it'd be confusing, because right, we right, were yeah. talking about another Indian. Oh, right, yeah, right. Never mind. Um, but it's like a 12-year-old white boy who I guess they're trying to make look Native American. Uh, I don't know, did you guys get that uh, yeah, impression? They... He's supposed to be made of, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, because yeah. he's like, you know, he's a tribesman who's hunting the purple buffalo and he rides on his horse and shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And Bastion. That, we, we, that no, wouldn't fly today. <laughs> well, uh, well, it is fantasy. He could be a, a white, white boy cosplaying as an Indian. Well, Seems we just had Johnny fine. Depp played a Native American like four years ago. So I, I think it would fly today. <laughs> well, he is pretty good, though. Yeah. He, he did that one pretty well. No, I, <laughs> Uh, and Atreyu in this movie is also very good. They put this poor little kid actor through the worst fucking shit you can imagine. They have him yeah. literally drowning and crawling through thick mud and shit and falling out of trees. It's uh, horrific, but we'll get to that. Damn. They, and uh, the, the big black guy says, You cannot be Atreyu. I wanted Atreyu the warrior, not Atreyu the boy. And Atreyu says, Well, bitch, I'm the only Atreyu from my land. If, if you didn't want me, you shouldn't have called for me. And Bastion, reading this book, he realizes, wait, the hero is a little boy? But in, in what world could a, a little white boy like me be the hero of anything? This is a very different yeah. time, E. Rich. <laughs> 1984, yeah. these, these poor uh, <laughs> uh, privileged white boys, they couldn't even yeah. imagine themselves being represented as heroes in the media. <laughs> Right. Yeah, and and he read the Lord of the Rings. He can't imagine the boy <laughs> going on a big adventure. Great. Well, I mean, uh, Frodo and 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 Gamwise and all them. They're not necessarily children. They're like a hundred years old, right? Well, no. Frodo is obviously young still. But isn't young for a Hobbit like fifty? Yeah, they're really old. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. I I I, I need to look this up. Doesn't Treasure How Island old? star like a twelve year old boy becomes a pirate? I don't, no, that's the Muppets talk. <laughs> I'm thinking of the the book. <laughs> <laughs> Not Muppets. Uh, Wait, is is jo Long John Silver supposed to be a, a little boy? No, that's not right. No, the protagonist is a, a little boy telling us about these pirates that he hangs out with, right? It's been a while since oh. I read Treasure Island. Well, anyways, Frodo is 33 years old, and that's very young for a hobbit. That's how old so Jesus was when he died! Huh? That's how old Jesus was when he died. Oh, damn. They're the same Frodo character. Frodo is Jesus. Makes he perfect sense. Makes the ultimate sacrifice. He throws his cool-ass <laughs> ring into some lava. <laughs> yeah. So, damn. Frodo is given the magical Orin, which is... The same symbol from the front of the book. It's the two snakes intertwining and shit. And they say, this is the magical Orin and it'll guide you or some shit. Now go what off. What does it even do? Um, it guides him. <laughs> yeah. That's all they say. It, I don't think it actually really does anything. It's just like a symbol yeah. of uh, 
the tranquility of Fantasia. And they say, like, hey, wait, this is on the cover of my book. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, it's, the, it's the MacGuffin. We found it. At that point, the kid says, holy fucking shit, and then looks at the cover of the book. <laughs> well, that's why they called it that. Uh -huh. So they, they say, uh, Atreyu, you need to find a cure for the Empress. She is very ill and going to die. We have no idea where you should look, so just randomly travel across all of Fantasia, hundreds of thousands of miles wide. There's no way you could cover it all, but just get on your horse Artax and fucking go. And that's just what he does. And we get a bunch of cool montages with the great, the great soundtrack to this film. Uh, a soundtrack yeah. that I've listened to in my car before driving around. And in certain tracks, you know, you get you get those tears jerking. You know what I'm talking about, boys? Whoa, whoa, I remember that scene. Poor Artax, but we're almost there. We, we <laughs> They, they really globetrotted to get all these cool scenery scenes of young Atreyu riding his horse in all these different lands. I wonder if they used the same horse for all of them because he was like in deserts, he was in jungles, he was uh, all over the place. This can't all be in Germany. It had to be all the same horse. He had to be flown all over the world. <laughs> I don't be. know. Could, could have all been. Do all white horses look the same? Know. Are you going to make that claim that all whites look the same, Florian? <laughs> you fucking Arab. Well, <laughs> yeah, I can't tell them apart. These damn white horses. <laughs> you look at me and you Richard like, wait, which one is which? Can't yeah, you, you horses, you all look the same. <laughs> e. Richard, did you leave the room? We can barely hear you. No, 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 I just said they all look the same. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so uh, we're past all like the super important things. I can skip a little bit. Uh, Atreyu is searching, he eats some lunch, Bastion eats lunch along with him, so he's really bonding with his character in the book. He's like, oh, a little boy hero, I wanna, I'm like him, I'll eat lunch when he eats lunch. But wait, no, we have to save some rations for later. But then, we see the ultimate antagonist in film history begins his quest, as long as, uh, as well as Atreyu. We don't, we don't see exactly what this is, but it's a, it's a dark, dog-like figure of pure evil and it's snarling and and it's got these big fangs and he says i'm gonna go find a tray and fucking kill him I, i'm a but he just stays there does he go anywhere yeah yeah no he uh i think he might have slept through a few scenes he uh, jumps out yeah well yeah he's he's on the hunt to kill a tray to stop him from curing the empress and saving Fantasia. i remember him saying he's going on the hunt but like i never really remember him <laughs> Well, going around. we'll get to that. There's a scene where Falcor literally saves Atreyu from the Gamork. Is that the very end? No, or it's it's, uh, end? it's in the swamps of sadness. Oh fuck. Okay. Anyway, uh, the Orin. Wait, actually, wait, Falcor was in the swamp. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, that's where he met Falcor. Wait, really? Didn't he meet Falcor after that? Like, no. A lot after no, that. No, he, he he meets Falcor when he wakes up after Falcor saves him from the swamp. But we're almost there, folks. But he, he talks to the slug first, out of the snail, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're getting to that right after we get to the most famous scene from the film. So he hasn't seen Falco yet, have, has he? No, no, I'm telling you, we'll get to that. <laughs> Stop it. Damn it. <laughs> this is going to be a never-ending <laughs> podcast about the never-ending story. It will be. Uh, Atreyu just thinks... slower and slower. <laughs> Atreyu Sorry. doesn't know what to do. So he mm. decides to go find... Um, Morla? Morla, the oldest, most ancient, wise beast in all of Fantasia. Morla is, yeah, a giant turtle monster whose shell is as big mm -hmm. as a mountain. And it, yeah. uh, Morla resides in the Swamps of Sadness. Now, the Swamps of Sadness, I think, are the book and the movies. Uh, one of its metaphors for depression or other um, sad feelings because the rules of the swamp state that if you let your sadness take over you, you will sink down into the swamp and drown. So you have to mm. keep positive thoughts constantly in your head. Did his horse get depressed? Yes. <laughs> That's. I didn't know. I didn't know horses could be how depressed. Sad it was. <laughs> yes. Let me explain. <laughs> they, they've got this poor okay. young kid actor in an actual horse marching through a. Thick, disgusting yeah. swamp full of mud and just gross water. And the and Atreyu's like, oh, mm. we got to keep our spirits up, Artax, or else we'll sink and die in the swamp. And they, they're walking through. But then suddenly, Artax, the horse, is no longer moving. And Atreyu's like, oh, uh -huh. come on. Oh, what? Is it is it too, too hard? Should we go a different way? But then he looks again. Suddenly, the horse is two feet deeper than he was a second ago. Mm. <laughs> and so uh, Atreyu realizes, 
Artax, you're sinking! Ah, oh, you stupid horse! Ah, oh, don't let the sadness overtake you, Artax! No, you gotta be positive! And, and Bastion reading the book alone up in the attic starts yelling, Be positive! Be positive! But alas, the horse gets too sad! <laughs> and mm -hmm. fucking drowns in the swamps of sadness. <laughs> and, and we have a scene of Atreyu. It's just Artax's head sticking out of a puddle while Atreyu is pulling on his reins and the yeah. horse looks genuinely terrified and in pain. <laughs> this poor actor horse, they're fucking torturing it. And Atreyu's yelling, Artax, you stupid horse! I love you! No! Artax! And then we see Atreyu just alone. Artax, the horse, has drowned in his own fucking sadness. <laughs> and it's, it's this is a children's film and it's it's traumatizing. <laughs> well, at least maybe one of the part where he actually goes on the fan, all the way under. This may be one of the saddest things I've ever seen in my life. Uh, so you were genuinely <laughs> moved by this scene? Uh, not to tears, but like it was just like shit. This is sad. Yeah, it's, and for for the fact that we just met Atreyu and Artax ten minutes ago, we don't really have like mm -hmm. a strong connection or bond with them and yet the film somehow makes it the saddest shit you'll ever fucking see um i would yeah. highly recommend after this podcast just go to uh youtube.com type in never ending story horse swamp scene i'm sure you'll fucking find it it's the most famous scene from the film and is probably parodied and um and referenced the most because it's so traumatizing to young children can you think of a, a sadder more fucked up scene in a children's film uh, that they just spring on you up, out of nowhere. Up, up, <laughs> up. Um, up. I mean, watching a horse drown. Have children. Watching a horse drown to death is uh, a little more sad to a kid, I think, than like uh, an mm -hmm. old man who has a happy relationship and then she dies of old age. Oh man, oof. You know, she can't have children. Who, who cares, man? Kids don't want to have kids. Kids want to <laughs> have a cool a horse. That's a very particular. <laughs> feel right there. yeah um i think up is more no traumatizing to adults to than to children well i yeah. think also this scene is so sad just because the fucking horse must be terrified yeah i i watched the behind <laughs> the scenes and it was kind of cool seeing how they like um how they built the swamp set and they had like an elevator that the horse was standing on to make it look like it was sinking but still okay. the horse doesn't know what the fuck is going on yeah, right, it probably right. thinks it's actually drowning <laughs> and and atreyu was pulling on his rein so hard like you can see the horse's gums it's like stop pulling on me and plus <laughs> that that kid has only so many hours per day that he can work I'm sure they worked that horse fucking nonstop. Oh my god, yeah. I bet the horse was glad when he, his character died in the movie so early yeah, on. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Oh yeah, he was tortured. glad to, to think it'll actually drown great. <laughs> yeah, because it doesn't have to be in this movie anymore. <laughs> yeah, do you think they, they actually filmed the horse going all the way underwater no. but then they cut it because it was too gruesome? Oh god, I hope not. <laughs> Imagine. I, was, I, I imagine in the remake with CGI, we'll actually see the horse's head go under the swamp, but uh, they did not have that option back then, I don't think. <laughs> so then a, a Atreyu. Do you think they would have gotten in trouble for doing that? Uh, yeah, I think they, if they filmed this scene today, I think they would get in a lot of trouble. That's, that's fucked up. It's like animal what? cruelty. So Atreyu. I not mind that much. Jeez. Despite HBO his. several horses for that show, luck. <laughs> Despite his lifelong companion Artax drowning in the swamps of sadness, Atreyu still keeps his spirits up so that he as well does not drown, and he manages to find the giant turtle ancient monster, Morla. Mm -hmm. Now, his interactions with Morla, I think, are um, both hilarious and, like, deeply disturbing and upsetting mm -hmm. <laughs> because uh, uh, Atreyu climbs up into a tree so that he can be uh, eye level with this giant turtle monster. And I right. really like I like Morla's dialogue because he's Morla the ancient one. So he's been just sitting in the swamp all alone for like millennia, and he has lines of dialogue like, uh, "We've been alone for so long that we started talking to ourselves." Because he keeps talking about himself as we, even though it's just him. And he Wait, says, he, uh, "Was was that a, a male turtle?" I I think the voice actor might have been a woman. I don't it know. Sounded so female, yeah. yeah. But it doesn't. It's and even when you, when you're recounting it now, it sounds female. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm such a good impressionist <laughs> of Morla the Ancient One. 
<laughs> yeah, such a, a nice old woman. Well, actually, she was horrible, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Atreyu is like, Morla, you have to help. The Empress is sick, and the nothing will destroy the land. You need to tell me what to do. And Morla's like, oh, we don't. Uh, uh, Atreyu says, don't you care? And Morla says, we don't care whether or not we care. A, a level of not giving a shit so intense. I don't know if it's ever been matched before. <laughs> not only These does are he not the levels unseen by yeah. a human. It's not that he doesn't eye. care. It's is that he doesn't care whether or not he cares. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, well, that's that's more caring than than ca than just not caring. I don't think so. Opinion. He can't even be bothered to think about it. <laughs> You know, if yeah. he doesn't care about her well-being, then that's negative. If he doesn't care about caring about her well-being, that's neutral. Yeah, but that's that's fucking nihilism. It, it, Morla that's is the ultimate nihilist, negative. and Morla is being pessimist. Morla also seems to be um, allergic to either children or to um, whatever species Atreyu is, because he keeps sneezing so violently, like a hurricane, that Atreyu continuously gets knocked out of the tree and lands down and sinks in the mud. And this isn't like a camera trick. We actually see this happen uh, in full shots to completion of this poor kid falling seven or eight feet down into mud over and over again. The actor who played Atreyu, I, I hope he got compensated well because he went through some bullshit to be in this movie. Oh, come on. Kids don't take fall damage. It must have been nice to play in the mud. <laughs> I don't know. It looked miserable. But I, I think Morla ultimately says... You can go to the Southern Oracle, uh, but it's 10,000 miles away. And Atreyu's like, oh, are you fucking kidding me? I just lost my horse. I can't travel 10,000 miles. We're fucked. All of Fantasia's fucked. And Morley's like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so Atreyu, fuck you, then. <laughs> Atreyu is, is defeated. He realizes there's all hope is lost. He starts crawling through the swamps of sadness, and now, now that he's lost hope, he's lost his horse, he realizes he can't travel 10,000 miles to the Southern Oracle. He begins sinking in the swamp. Meanwhile, the, the wolf beast that was on its hunt to kill Atreyu is about to catch up to him, the Gamork baby. And right, it's coming up right as it's about to bite into Atreyu and kill him. A giant white dog dragon monster flies out of the sky dives down uh, with a, a really uh, unfortunate effect on screen. Uh, his his hand reaches <laughs> out and grabs a Treyu and uh -huh. picks him up and flies him away right before the Gamork can eat him. Uh, yeah. uh, Florian, who is this giant dog dragon monster? Man, I can't believe I didn't even pay attention to Gamork in that scene. <laughs> yeah, you missed <laughs> That's out. That's crazy. Yeah, I only remember him in the end. Huh? Now, That's is, is Falcor a deus ex machina by design. Yeah. Damn. Yes. In how, thing, so any how kind of fancy thing happens, you can fuck with it. Now, um, I uh, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but this this dragon is Falcor the Luck Dragon, who is the embodiment of luck. So you think, oh, with him on your side, how could you really lose? Like it's uh he's maxed out his luck category in D and D. Erid, you play D and D. If you max out your luck, you automatically win, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think so. You rolled instant 20s every time. So uh, Falcor represents everything that is good and, and, and lucky with the world. The, the, the pure optimist, he's always happy. Whereas the Gamork, the, uh, Falcor's white, the dark, evil, black Gamork represents everything that is cruel and twisted and evil in the world. And he's an agent of the nothing. He wants to kill the hero Atreyu to ensure that the nothing destroys the concept of fantasy in destroying Fantasia. And Erich, you might be interested to learn that the, the mm. Gamork and Falcor are voiced by the same guy. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me at all. I think yeah. not. it's not, it's not out of laziness that they didn't want to hire more voice actors. It's, I think... It's a symbolic uh, uh, casting. Yeah, when you have one guy representing the the good and the bad. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Pure Kino. Kino casting, Which, you could say. I thought while I was watching this, especially at the very last scene with the Gamork, when he was, like, stuck under that uh, cave or whatever, and you could just see, like, the shadowy face. Yeah. That, like, he was going to be an alternate version of uh, Falcor. 
Like he is an evil twisted version of Falcor, like oh. an evil twisted luck dragon. They're very different. Oh, oh, they, sizes. they accidentally made him all evil, and then they just used him as the bad guy. It, it represents, could, yeah. what, what's the opposite of luck? Bad luck? Like, is there one? Yeah, word? I guess. <laughs> Misfortune dragon. Yeah, the <laughs> Misfortune wolf. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, and also, the same right. voice actor does uh, the voice of the rock eater and the narrator, but I don't think there's any uh, a meta narrative uh, significance to either of those. Yeah, castings. there's no pottery there. I think at that point they were just being lazy. <laughs> <laughs> so you think this is poetic? You don't think it's it's nihilistic and just anti-religious? The, the the bad guy, the bad deity, and the good deity are the same. It's all the same, just there to to inject pointless meaning into things yeah it's like the phantom menace uh opening uh text where oh. it says there are there are uh, heroes on both sides <laughs> the the sith and the the jedi have heroes on them <laughs> what does that mean <laughs> sounds like something trump would say <laughs> wow but george lucas said it <laughs> oh damn <Yeah. laughs> have, have you ever uh, have you ever thought about that one erich how are the heroes on both sides uh evil is everywhere that's in the opening crawl of episode three revenge of the sith <laughs> Uh, well, have you heroes on both sides? Can you explain what that means? Uh, yeah, I mean, there are good guys who are fighting for good things, and there's bad guys who are fighting for good things, and bad guys who are wouldn't fighting that be for a villain? And vice versa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Was that bad guys who are fighting for good things is a villain? Well, yeah, because you're, you're the bad you. guy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's too <laughs> yeah, it's a bad guy, but if if the ends are ultimately positive, then are they really a bad guy? So like Trump, like how he has like good goals, so he's like yeah. the good guy all along. We gotta yeah. get all of our Trump exactly shit before like Erich that. quits the show. Well, he did not collude with Russia, so Well, for all we know, right, Erich? Well, is is everyone just believing that now after all this fake news bullshit? I, 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 they, they they just all believe now that he's not colluded. I think that uh Putin might have gotten into Mueller's pocket, huh, Erich? Is that is that what we're thinking? <laughs> Wait, you're I mean, saying I, that I can't believe the narrative would just die here after all this witch no, hunt that yeah. we've gone through so far. Wait, you just said that Mueller paid off uh, No, no, Putin. Putin paid off M Mueller. Mueller, what's okay, his fucking all right, name? all right, all right. I that, don't know. Yeah, but you said that uh, uh, Mueller was in Putin. Wait, fuck. That, never mind. So fuck Atreyu it. wakes up, uh, snuggled up with <laughs> his savior, Falcor the dragon, who tells him that he likes children. <laughs> <laughs> but also, Falco mm -hmm. the Luck Dragon has flown him uh, 9,984 9, miles to the Southern Oracle. Now it's just a short walk away. And Atreyu's like, whoa, how did this happen? And Falco says, with luck, fam. And he winks at him. <laughs> Dragon of fast travel. <laughs> yeah, they, they finally say, why Why didn't they just use the eagles all the way in Lord of the Rings? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Why didn't they just use the dragons? They solved that problem, but they made it more interesting because now, it, uh, sure, even if you use the eagles, the real battle is not the journey, but the destination. Mm. Uh, so here, uh, that can't be right. That's the opposite of how that should go. No, oh, too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, the journey is the real goal. Atreyu meets some. Uh, Three inch tall, uh, a three inch tall couple who one of them's a scientist who is studying the Southern Oracle, and the Southern Oracle is being protected by these two giant um, parallel sphinx creatures with like really big tits and like yeah. a sort of cat features, and they're like um, on like they're like in a mountain facing each other, and the only way to get through is to walk between them, and the scientist explains to Atreyu that these two things, uh, they they can sense. Um, the the inside of a warrior, and if you doubt yourself whatsoever, they will shoot laser beams out of their eyes and kill you instantly. And he's been observing this for years, and he's watched many warriors try to walk between the sphinxes, and each and every time, they doubt themselves at some point uh, before crossing through, and they get shot with the lasers and killed. And we, we see that happen, because well, Atreyu watches through this... I, I don't know if... Uh, like a, a binocular has been invented in this world. He has a very, very strange machine with like a, a bunch of uh, crystals Crystal and shit. sticking out of it. What the fuck is that? You could just yeah, I thought he was charging his desk ray right, with that one, but no, it was yeah. a, a telescope somehow. Yeah, hmm. uh, you could just like make a lens and look through it, dude. You don't need like a, um, I guess in this fantasy world, everything needs to be convoluted and crazy for the sense of whimsy. <laughs> <laughs> but Atreyu says, "Fuck Ooh. that! I don't doubt myself. I can go through the sphinxes right now." Right. Now here's where we get the one moment in the film 
that I think they they traded metaphor and meaning for cinematic excitement. This is the one of the few things I would change if I were to be in charge of this film that came oh. out nine years or eleven years before I was born. Because mm-hmm. Atreyu, he approaches the, the the twin sphinxes, and he's walking through, and the scientist man is like, "Oh, Atreyu, don't doubt yourself. You can do it. You can do it." And Atreyu eventually he makes it through, but like by the skin of his teeth, because the sphinxes shoot the laser beams at him, but he manages to make it through anyway. Uh, so I'm thinking, what the fuck? So Atreyu doubted himself. <laughs> what the fuck? That's he not Atreyu. Himself. Well, the sphinxes are bad at their job. But like, we know that the sphinxes always hit their mark. So did Atreyu just uh-huh. not doubt himself until he was past the point of no return? What the fuck? Why, why would they why do, do you this? Why do assume so much? Why do you buy into this narrative? It's obvious that the sphinx is to shoot everyone and <laughs> the, the only challenge here is to dodge. And no one uh, ever realized that they just had to dodge. Are you telling me that the, they... the scientist who has watched everybody get shot with these lasers didn't just magically realize that they're shooting people who doubt themselves? Where is he getting this uh, this data? He just, well, it sounds like he just made caught, that up. Right? Who got through? Nobody. Everybody gets shot. How did the scientists come to the conclusion that the sphinxes kill you if you doubt yourself? That's, that's, that's what, what a weird un- guess. Scientific. Yeah, because every single person <laughs> has been... Everyone. How does he measure the amount of doubt that each soldier has as they're getting killed? <laughs> like, as far <laughs> as he knows, it's just they shoot everybody. Uh, <laughs> very strange. <laughs> <laughs> That's not really scientific at all, is it? I guess there must be some kind of inscription, but yeah, I guess they clearly just shoot everyone. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, Atreyu... so, so how is it in the book? Do they shoot everyone in the book? I haven't made it that far yet. I'm only 50 pages into oh. the book. Yeah. Mm. I wish I knew. <laughs> Kill now, them all, like God sort them out. <laughs> now, boys, yeah. boys, I told you this is the most meta movie of all time, surpassing even Deadpool. And Deadpool, of course, has, like, the lazy, jokey level of meta where Deadpool's like, hey, right. guys, this isn't your your daddy's comic book movie. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Chonga, look at my dick. Um, oh, no. Like, that's, like, the lazy, fun kind of meta. This is the kind of meta that goes to such an inception level of fucking with your mind that um, the, the film speaks directly to you, and we will get to that shortly, but this is, we're about to enter the first layer of, of the meta cake here, and you're going to appreciate and love it, and then later on realize that the real meta was the friends we made along the way, boys. <laughs> because the scientist tells Falcor, he might have made it past this gate, but the mere gate is the real test. Nobody has ever made it through the mere gate. And I'm thinking, well, yeah, no shit. They haven't made it past the Sphinx gate. How the f- how do you even know that the mere <laughs> right, gate exists? Right. You've never fucking yeah. been that far. What are you talking about? Yeah. How do you know this? And, and the scientist man says to Falco, at the mere gate, um, a, a person see, looks in the mirror and sees their true self. Brave men realize that they are cowards. Tall men realize that they are short. <laughs> Florian realizes that his game is bad. And all, and all this, you know, all mm-hmm. these things. Damn. <laughs> Florian realizes myself now. <laughs> he is an octopus and not a squid. <laughs> oh, no. So you're thinking, okay, <laughs> what, what could Atreyu possibly see in the mirror gate? What reflection of his true self could he possibly see that would stop him on his journey to save Fantasia. Now, this is where if you don't, if you haven't seen this 75 times, it might be very, very confusing. So, Erich, mm-hmm. can you explain in your own words what did Atreyu see in the mirror gate? I, I definitely did not see this part. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Florian, in your own words, what did Atreyu see in the mirror gate? Well, he saw Bastion in the mirror gate. That's but... fucking yeah. right! Yeah. It was a very confusing edit. I would have just assumed they cut back and forth between Bastion and him at all the time anyway. So no. I wouldn't have guessed that he actually saw Bastion. It was, it no, was because, kind of unclear. Because, because it's not the full screen. We see Atreyu's reflection in the mirror, and then his own reflection fades into Bastion reading the book. Atreyu's true self <laughs> is not that he's a coward or, or any of that. It's that he is the character in a book. So the so Treyu has to come to terms with the fact that his entire world is fake and that he is just a character in a narrative. 
has yeah, but does Atreyu himself know that? Yes, well, he does might realize. That. Bastion he might realize. realize no, no, that, Atreyu but... realizes it because in order to pass through the gate, he has to uh, come to terms with who he is, and we see that he walks through the mirror gate. So this poor mm. character, it's uh, what was that movie um uh, with Will Ferrell? Um, where it's sort of the same thing, where it's like... I know, it's Stranger Than Fiction. Yeah, Stranger Than Fiction, mm -hmm. where like a character kind of realizes their story, or a character in a book. We have the same mm -hmm. thing, but Atreyu is such a brave and valiant warrior who wants to save his land that he accepts this... What what would drive any other person to madness? If you if I found out that I was just in my son's video game trying to catch a fish, I would probably <laughs> have a psychotic breakdown. Atreyu, yeah. he embraces the fact that his world is fake and that he is just a character in a narrative and walks through that fucking mirror gate anyway, ready to get to finally the, the Southern Oracle to find out how he can save his land. Boys, is, but, is this not Kino already? I don't know, man. This is, this is weird in, in many I ways because Atreyu really doesn't understand. He, in the end, he doesn't understand that there is a little boy reading the book, even though he sees that little boy in the mirror. So right. obviously he didn't get what you think he got there. Well, he, he sees it, and then later on he fully comes to terms with it. Mm -hmm. But he, he sees his true self and is able to pass through the gate. Does he say, at this point, does he say, despite all my rage, I'm still just a rat in a cage? <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> That's during the uh, the post credit scene. He, he breaks out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, what, what band no, is that? Uh, Smashing Pumpkins. <laughs> so, yeah, fucking Smashing yeah. Pumpkins. The best Smashing Pumpkins song is the, the Elliot Rogers song. Uh, uh, what's a boy supposed to do? Uh, anyway, enough about the Smashing <laughs> Pumpkins. Let's get back to smashing through this book, folks. Um, and, uh, of course, Bastion, upon reading this, he, and he realizes, like, the book describes himself reading that part of the book, and Bastion's like, what the fuck? That's impossible! <laughs> what the fuck is this shit? And he, like, throws the book across the mm -hmm. room because he's so disturbed. Uh, meanwhile... Out this is bullshit. Dobby isn't gay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, meanwhile, he, he's, got, fucking... he, he's the one who goes crazy, but, but Atreyu takes it well. But but to to him he's just how is this book so special to him? Well, just just you wait, in. Florian. All will be revealed. So uh, yeah, Bast yeah, Bastion reads a description in the book of him in the attic reading the book. Meanwhile, outside the school, there's a horrible dark thunderstorm, tornado, crazy shits going on. The the door or the window of the attic gets blown open, and and Bastion has to go close it. It seems that the more that the nothing is destroying Fantasia. Bastion's world is also uh, immersed in some sort of storm, a similar storm as well. Could it be these two worlds are, are more conjoined than we think? Could the world of reality and the world of fantasy be more connected than his fa Bastion's father might think, telling him he needs to come back to reality, get his head out of the clouds? Dad, what if the real world and, and my, the fantasy world in my head have equal footing? Huh? Two worlds, one family. That's right. The best of both worlds, as Hannah Montana might say. <laughs> anyway. I'm reading a little bit into it just because of some bad weather. All right. Oh, shut the fuck up, Florian. <laughs> Why would they put that in there on accident? <laughs> I, well, I know, but that doesn't mean it's real just because it seems that way. What? <laughs> what are you talking Why would they put it in I the mean, movie? It's not like... We see him look out for dramatic effect. No, no, you, you, you underestimate the levels of uh, Kino that this movie goes to. Because if if your if your mind isn't blown yet, which it, it might not be. Well, I, I get it. I just no, don't no. buy Florian, it as much. Florian, you do not get it. You do not <laughs> yeah, get. Okay. No, no, we're not even to the part you need to get yet. Just you wait. I've seen the movie. I'm telling you, you don't get it. <laughs> I need to explain. I need to condescend and mansplain this to you. Very likely, Monkey. Okay, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Sebastian so con <laughs> continues reading the book. And Atreyu arrives at the Southern Oracle, which is like, I guess, a, a blue glowing version of the Sphinx thing. I, maybe they ran out of budget and didn't want to design something else. I don't know. I'll find out when I read the book. And the Southern Oracle, this, this ancient um, uh, magical figure, tells him, the only cure for the Empress that can save all of Fantasia is a human child. A human child needs to give the childlike Empress a new name. And Atreyu says, a human child? What, what, what is that? Where am I supposed to find one? And the, and the Southern Oracle says, 
You, you can't find one. No, no such thing exists within the boundaries of Fantasia. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What, what is Atreyu to do? What is he to do? So he goes back. He gets back with Falcor. The nothing is just destroying the land like crazy. The world's being destroyed. They search far and wide. They're flying around on Falcor trying to find a human child, but they can't because there's no such thing in the world of Fantasia. What are they to do, boys? Uh, find the kid who's reading the book. <laughs> Damn, Erich, how did you get to this conclusion? Amazing. It's almost it's like almost I watched some of had... the movie. <laughs> oh, jeez. So at one point, the nothing, this dark hole force that is destroying the whole world, catches up with them. And uh, it's it's too much for a Falcor to take, and, and Atreyu falls off of Falcor. They're separated. Atreyu washes up on land, and he runs into... The rock biter, the giant rock mm. mountain man we saw at the beginning. And I wanted uh, Erich to really take a lot away from this scene and how touching and sad it is. But it turns out he didn't even understand what he was saying. <laughs> nope. What did he say? Okay. Damn. Let, let me spell this out for you. I've watched this scene on YouTube many times. Mm -hmm. The rock biter. He is the most depressed I think a character could possibly be. He's sitting no, there. No, 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 no. Oh, wait, you're talking about yourself here or what? <laughs> the air conditioner from the Brave Little Toaster is uh, obviously I have not more seen depressed. that one. Yeah, right. geez. The rock biter, who's he's a giant monster made of rocks, right? And he's looking at his giant, strong rock hands. He says, they look like big, strong hands, don't they? My friends... The, the Indian Willy Wonka and the Hobgoblin. <laughs> the nothing came and, and, and was blowing them into it to, to destroy them. And, and I, I tried to hold on to them as strong as I could to save them. But the nothing ripped them out of my hands. I, I couldn't save my friends. They look like big, strong hands, don't they? And if, if you can watch that scene while understanding the dialogue, Erich, without, mm -hmm. without tearing up at the sadness of this man's survivor's guilt that he yeah. could not save and protect his friends from utter destruction, cellular-level destruction, and he feels like he wasn't enough, he wasn't good enough or strong enough, the one thing he has going for him is how big and strong he is, and even that wasn't enough to save and protect those he loved. And he's just sitting so guilty, so sad, literally waiting for the nothing to catch up and kill him too. What, what, John Wick was not this sad. John Wick never gave up on his life and waited to die. <laughs> this rock monster is, is at the bottom of the barrel. Nope, at the bottom of the pit of depression. Who could be sadder than this rock monster waiting to die, uh, uh, drowning in guilt? Um, I believe the rock monster says, what do I get for my pain? Betrayed desires and a piece of the game. Uh, <laughs> maybe that's, the, that maybe that's in the from? book. <laughs> yeah. What is that from? I'm just, I just keep quoting the world is a vampire. What? <laughs> damn. God, yeah, damn it. And the, the rock monster only met these guys in the prologue, but I guess they've already gone on this epic journey. So it's like the Fellowship of the Ring, where they all die except for one. That's right. And he's left behind. That's right. Uh, some would argue that the the story of Neverending Story is a is a better fantasy story than Lord of the Rings, Lorian. <laughs> some somewhat by some I mean probably me because I haven't read Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Well, but you've seen it. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, so Atreyu continues on past the rock uh, biter, and he comes across these th these ancient walls covered in murals. And Erich, who was paying attention, what what is painted upon these ancient murals that Atreyu comes across as he's waiting for the nothing to kill him? Um, the entire story that we just saw. Yeah, painted upon these ancient walls are... Uh, images of Atreyu's journey. We see uh, him trying to save Artax from the swamps of sadness. We we see him uh, uh, 
uh, flying with Falcor, everything. And Atreides like, what in the fuck is going on? How How is my story that I just experienced the last few days, how is it painted upon these ancient walls? And then he comes across the final mural painting. And it's mm -hmm. um, the scary dark wolf monster Gamork. And then we hear the, uh, the violin cue. The and he turns around and fucking Gamork's right there and he says... I am the Gamork. I am the agent of the nothing. It is my duty to make sure the nothing destroys all the Fantasia. And the tree is like, what is the nothing? What's going on? And Gamork says, the nothing is the emptiness felt by mankind. And it will destroy your sense of wonder and phantasma. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, that's a that's a pretty straightforward metaphor here. The uh, the senses of uh, depression and doubt and all these things uh, destroy artistic ambition. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm falling so far. And then the Gamork says, uh, I, there is one man... A warrior who I was meant to kill. But I lost him in the swamps of sadness. And his name was Atreyu. And Atreyu says, well, well, I am Atreyu, the warrior. If you want to fight me, then let's fucking fight you, Gamork, bitch. And he grabs a rock. Gamork jumps on him. Atreyu stabs him in the heart, fucking kills him. That's right. That's how you do it. You just hold a sharp thing while the monster jumps on top of you and it just happens to hit him in the heart. Um, not, not, one hit kill. Not the uh, not the best fight scene, but uh, I like what it represented. <laughs> one shot, one kill. Every furry in the audience <laughs> cries at the the death of the wolf. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah <laughs> like, oh, no, he was so young, he could have fucked me. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, that evil, ferocious wolf. They don't want the good wolf. They want the bad one. No, huh? they they want like the Damn. they want the edgy demon wolf <laughs> monster man. <laughs> So, oh yeah, they, they all went the werewolves from Twilight. True, mm. you're not wrong. <laughs> so then uh, Treyu meets back up with Falcor uh, after Falcor retrieves the Orin that fell into the ocean or some shit, and uh, it's too late. The nothing destroys the entire world, and now it's just a Treyu flying on Falcor's back, just uh, flying through space. Uh, better space effects than any Star Wars movie. Looks really great. We got. Weird little yeah, patches of land. Yeah, flying than before in this movie as well. It's pretty good. Yeah, they're uh, they're flying through space. All the Fantasia is gone. There's little patches of land, and they wonder, well, could the Ivory Tower still exist? Does the the, the symbol and beacon of hope hope in this land could it still remain after the nothing has destroyed everything? It turns out, yeah, yeah. They fly, and they and the only thing left in all of Fantasia is the Ivory Tower. Everybody is dead except for Falcor, Atreyu. And the childlike empress. And boys, we're about to get into some uh, dangerous territory. <laughs> because Atreyu walks into the throne room of the sick childlike empress. Now, the childlike empress, Erich, is being portrayed by, I think, an 11 or 12-year-old actress. But the, uh, the mm -hmm. controversy on 4chan <laughs> is that, according to the, char the, uh, the character's name, she's only the childlike Empress, she, she's yeah, not. She's right. not a child. She's just childlike, which harkens back to many an argument I've had with Digibro and Psy in the past. Oh my god! She's she's not a child. She's a five thousand year old witch. She's only childlike. To which I say, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah, still looks like a child to me. <laughs> is Atreyu childlike, or is he a real child? Who could tell? No, he's Atreyu the boy, not Atreyu the warrior. <laughs> but uh, Atreyu is, is talking to the childlike empress and says, Yeah, uh, I went on the quest. I'm sorry that I failed. Uh, all of Fantasia is going to, to be uh, uh, d destroyed forever because I failed. And she says, No. You didn't fail. He says, yes, I did. I had to find um, a human child, and I searched everywhere, and I couldn't find him. I failed. She says, no, no, Atreyu, you don't understand. You did find him, and you brought him here with you. And he's like, what? What, what the fuck are you talking about? And Bastion's like, wait, what the fuck is this bitch talking about? And then, boys, this is the line of dialogue that ascends this film into pure Kino because 
-hmm. she explains to Atreyu, you know, he was he was with you on your journey. He he watched you do this and that and and all that. But then she says, um, um, God, I, I, I got to get it perfectly right, but I don't have it. I'm going to paraphrase. Mm -hmm. But she says something along the lines of uh, in reference to this human child. They were with him when he hid from the boys in the bookstore. Now, Florian, as somebody who told me you understand this movie, what does that line of dialogue mean? Well, it's pretty obvious that he's talking about the boy. I mean, she's talking about the boy who's reading the book. Right. No, he's talking about us, the audience. Yeah. Who are watching the boy. Right. Uh, Bastion. Well, if... well, what are you talking about? It's obviously Bastion who, who is the, the one who saves the world. Yeah, you're right. But, but when she says they were with him when he hid from the boys in the bookstore, who is the they yeah. that she is talking about, Florian? Are you sure that's what she said? Yes! Shut the... Yes, yes I'm fucking absolutely sure. sure. Now answer the question. Who is the they? <laughs> I've only seen I mean, that would refer to an audience, sure. But, but she's only said it... But that's the only reference, isn't it? To, to, to the audience? Who, who was with Bastion when he hid from the bullies in the bookstore? Who was with him, Florian? The audience? Yes! <laughs> so, he, it. he fucking said it! So here's how the movie sets you up for the trap. We, we get the, the narrative of um, um, poor, poor uh, uh, Atreyu has to realize that he is just a character in a book. And we're like, okay, yeah, it's, it's like Inception level one. But now <laughs> Bastion, the boy reading the book, has to come to terms with that. He's a character in a movie that we are watching. And if he thought it was bad, <laughs> that poor Atreyu's life was a lie. Now he has to come to terms with his own existence being fucking fake. That's when it uh, transcends Damn. into pure fucking Kino, folks. This is the biggest mindfuck movie you'll ever fucking see. Ah, oh, meta on levels Deadpool can't even fucking hope to hit. That's why right. we're we're breaking the eighth wall right here. The guy in the chat's fucking right. Oh my god, could you imagine? But then what? How come that Atreyu? I uh, know. I mean, Bastion is the one who saves the world in the end. Well, if we are supposed to be the real human child. No, let's let's continue. Let's continue. <laughs> and, because it's it's controversial. The the author of the book hates the movie because of where they ended. Oh, so no. I'll, I'll explain the whole thing. So um, the world is crumbling and being destroyed. Atreyu is, is, I guess, killed when the ground beneath him cracks and he just like falls over dead. And now it's like no more Atreyu after we've been with him for so long. And Bastion cannot come to terms with the fact that the book is literally asking him. He's the human child. It's asking him to give the childlike empress a new name so that she can be cured. He's like this... This is impossible. This is just, it's just a story. It's just a story. It's not real. I got to keep my feet on the ground. I got to get my head out of the clouds. All the, the things that his father tried to drill in his head, he's real. He has to come to terms with the fact that all these fantasy is real. He is living a fantasy. His whole world is a fantasy. It's not real. It's, and, and, and the childlike empress is now all alone. And, and crying, literally uh, crying, bawling her eyes out, saying, Bastion, please give me a name. Save our world. Bastion, save us. And he says, all right, I will. I will save you. And Bastion gets up. He climbs up to the window of the attic, opens the window. There's a crazy dark storm outside. And he screams, Moon Child. And now this is weird. The name he chose for the empress is Moonchild, but earlier on in the film, he says, uh, uh, man, if only they could give the child like empress my mother's name. She had such a beautiful, beautiful name. Are we expected to believe that Bastion's mother was named Moonchild? What the uh, fuck? Is it possible she was a hippie? <laughs> uh, that's fucking weird. What the hell? Well, her parents would have been hippies. <laughs> Well, yeah. uh, bizarre, bizarre choice. Um, I'll see if that's in the book, but I, I don't get that at all. <laughs> Could have been. Oh, I thought, I thought you were gonna explain the meaning behind that. Next no, I have, I have no fucking idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know why they did that. But well, then, monkey, can I spoil the book for you after you finish with the movie? Not, no, I'm gonna spoil the book for me. I already know okay. about the book. Yeah, all that's right. that's why the that's why the ending is controversial. So then uh, he, mm, he the shouts. The author hates it. Yeah, I know. I, I already said that, E. Rich. Were, were you sleeping okay. during this right. podcast? 
<laughs> yeah, I guess you so. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so now the screen is all dark. We get a light up. Childlike Empress on the left. Light up. Bastion on the right. Bastion and the Childlike Empress are meeting face to face. And she says to him, This one piece of sand is all that remains of Fantasia. It's all lost except for this. He's like, oh, man, so we, we failed. It didn't work. There's no hope. And she says, no, there is with you. You could take this grain of sand that represents fantasy, Fantasia, and you can use it to rebuild our world. You can use it to make a wish and have anything you want come true. And he says, well, well, how many wishes do I get? And she says, as many as you want, unlimited wishes, which of course is, <laughs> is you know, the, the whole premise of the film with, with fantasy. Uh, mm -hmm. th there are no limitations. You can come up with whatever you want. You can create uh, endless uh, fantasy worlds through uh, creative writing or, or whatever you want to do, which I think yeah, is a great it, message. It can have as many faces as you want in one head. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so Bastion uses this newfound power of fantasy to rebuild Fantasia. Bastion is now within the world of Fantasia, riding around on Falcor. He's putting everything back the way it was. He sees Atreyu on the horse, waves down at him. He's flying around and he's like, you know what? Fuck this. And Bastion, Bastion now knowing that he himself, much like Atreyu was just a character in a book, knowing that he is a character in a movie and has now Unlimited potential. He's the god of this new world because it's just fantasy. It's not reality. His whole life is a lie. He can do anything he wants. He decides, I'm going to use Falcor to fucking kill my goddamn bullies in the real world. <laughs> so now we're back in German, German New York. Bastion flies in on Falcor and says, There's those fucking bullies! I'm going to fucking kill you, you motherfuckers! And, and the, the bullies are like, What the fuck? And they see this giant dragon flying at them. They run, they jump and hide in the garbage can. Bastion and Falcor are laughing maliciously like, ah! <laughs> Bastion is laughing like, I am the god of this new world! Anything I want can happen, will happen! Uh, I've come to... He's like gone full psychotic because he's come to terms with the fact that his reality <laughs> is a lie and that he could just he could do whatever the fuck he wants and he his reign of terror begins and that's where they end the film they this end it right so there fucked up. it is so fucked it's up it's fucking is crazy it, is that what the author didn't like the reign of terror no, no the author doesn't like that because in the book that's only the halfway point in the second half of the book follows Bastion's reign of terror, and I'm really looking forward to reading that. Well, wouldn't that be... Like, I, is, do they do that in the movie? In the, in the second movie? Uh, the, the second no. and third movie are um, complete bullshit and have nothing to do with the book. Mm -hmm. Oh. And like I want to book, see the like, reign of terror. Yeah. Time he makes a oh. wish. Every time he makes a wish, get rid of one of his own memories. Uh, I don't and, know. Like he just is slowly losing all of his personality and all. Wait, of, why do you like, know the book? He, is. he probably. Just... I fucking read the summary on Wikipedia. Uh, great. <laughs> ah, of course you have. Well then. Uh, I so wanted to know the... why the author oh, hated it. I guess it. it's still in the same book. Okay, yeah. so uh, that is my. Um, as long as the movie uh, summary of the movie, I I really had to go through each and every detail to evaluate all the, the little metaphors about creativity and depression that the author put in, that the filmmakers put in, and mm -hmm. uh, the level of meta that I don't think any other movie has ever uh, reached, where the character in the movie realizes that he is a character in the movie, and the, the yeah. audience is directly acknowledged uh, three layers deep. Uh, I, I yeah. think that's what makes this... It, it transcends being just a kid movie for me. It's like, this is pure Kino. This is a great film. Damn. I I'm I'm really surprised at how deep this mo this movie went. They yeah. didn't have to do that, but they did it. No, oh, and they they didn't have to put so much work into the puppetry or any of it. It's uh, mm -hmm. for all the faults mm -hmm. it might have for being you know a film of its time, like the bad green screen. Um, they more than make up for it with everything else. I think I, this is a, a movie that, and I can't even recommend this movie. Like I, I wouldn't tell people to watch it because what? <laughs> because they would probably not like it at all. That's why I feel like I have to explain every ounce of it for people to uh, be know. interested in watching it. Because otherwise, you're like, why am I watching this stupid shit with fucking puppets and stuff? I don't care. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I still don't get why it's so special. Because it's just, how, how is it different than if if the kid had just like 
actually gotten into the if it's just like Narnia or some bullshit, how how is that different in in a big way? Because this is a movie where the character uh, realizes he is a movie character and uses that power to become the god of the new world. <laughs> His day and of it, retribution begins. Yeah, it's like it's like I, a I children's was... <laughs> cute little fantasy adventure film, and it ends with uh, a little boy getting retribution against all of society with his giant magic dragon. <laughs> But you're saying he's doing that anyways in the book, so he doesn't even have to be a, a movie character for that. Well, yeah, that's why I think the movie is like a whole extra layer, because they don't have that in the book, obviously. So you're saying the movie's better, then? I, I don't know. I haven't finished the book yet. Right. Yeah, that's why I'm reading it. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I guess they could... I mean, I guess that's all from the book anyways, and it's just like, yeah, he reads a book and he gets really into it, and then I guess... I, oh, I guess he, he, he literally gets into it, if you know what I'm saying. Well, yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> anyway, that's uh, that's what I wanted to say about the never-ending story. I've been going on for an hour and a half. Do you guys have any uh, final thoughts before we wrap up this Kino episode? <laughs> it was all right. Fucking hear it. It's all right. Mm. <laughs> well, I mean, the obvious thing is that he, he just fell into the dumpster and, and it was full of heroin needles. And that's why he went yeah. insane. He um, got AIDS. That is a good interpretation. I think you might be right, Florian. But, but I guess more importantly is that he is a character in a movie that reads a book where he's a character in. And then, <laughs> and then he's retold by a monkey who is a character in, in the internet. Oh, no. And that, that, more layers get added to I'm the about, I'm about to find out constantly. that I, I'm nothing more than just an internet personality and that I don't actually <laughs> have my own uh, life outside of this. And it's almost as if my every waking moment is dedicated <laughs> to my, my internet career and I don't even mm. have a personality outside of it anymore. Maybe I am the bastion of my reality. <laughs> yeah, this, as soon as we're going to hang up this call, you, you'll cease to exist. You'll cease to, yeah, right, right. Yeah, if, <laughs> if nobody's it's quite horrible for you. If nobody's watching me on a stream or watching a video, Video of mine, I don't <laughs> exist. That's why I gotta keep tweeting so people are. Um, I always have to be consumed in some capacity, or else I'll cease to exist. Yeah, it's either that or planning to be an online personality, and that's all that you exist as. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I can see why E. Rich is uh, so excited to retire from this show so that he doesn't have to spend uh, so many waking hours thinking about his online personality like I do. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh yeah, maybe it's all Fight Club in the end, where where Erich was actually Mumpy all along. And... <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I wish Wait, I could what? be so lucky. <laughs> you, you, you think you're gonna get out, but as soon as you're out, you're gonna get pulled right back in, and then you'll you'll see that that Mumpy had your credit card all along. <laughs> all right, boys, let's do a let's do a quick questionnaire. What was your or who was your favorite character in the Never Ending Story? Erich, go. Um, Florian, uh, the old the old man who gives out the book, <laughs> okay. the snail. Okay, here's my here's my argument. Uh -oh. This old man is obviously passing on the world of Fantasia and keeping it alive by passing it on to uh, uh, Bastion. So like he is he is not only giving Fantasia more life, he's also essentially dooming uh, Bastion to live in this crazy fantasy world uh Damn. and and continue its existence by only uh subsuming his own self into the fantasy okay there you go right sure <laughs> he's a well, hero I just, florian I just you said you like the snail yeah the snail <laughs> just got the, the best design i i don't know i've never seen a more beautiful creature and it's so fast too it's perfect yeah, he's a racing <laughs> snail the characters are like how are you gonna make it in time you're on a fucking snail and he says motherfucker it's a racing snail and that it mm -hmm. takes off like a steam locomotive baby that snail goes crazy fast <laughs> we don't even have time for a racing snail yeah, gonna yeah. Go. <laughs> <laughs> he just goes by this movie is uh, is pure entertainment on every level. For kids, you'll just uh, well, at least back in the '80s. I, I don't know about kids these days, but uh, you can enjoy like the fantasy elements and the you know the f cute little creatures and the the crazy shit. And for adults, you can enjoy the the Inception levels of crazy meta kingdom. Meta shit. Yeah. yeah, 
It's it's one of those movies <laughs> that you'll love as a kid and appreciate more as an adult. And that's why The NeverEnding Story, in my opinion, is pure Kino and one of my favorite films of all time. E. Rich and Florian, would you guys recommend The NeverEnding Story and would you say it's Kino? If you're the kind of person who loves Labyrinth and the Dark Crystal and all of those other like puppety uh, 80s and 90s movies, then absolutely you should watch uh, uh, The NeverEnding Story because I think it's better than both of those movies. Wow. Oh, wow. High praise. High praise. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I would recommend it, but I guess it's a very old movie, so I'm not sure if, if new generations will enjoy it as much. Yeah, yeah that's my worry too. <laughs> what a shame. <laughs> uh, at but... least watch the, the sad scenes on YouTube. Watch the Artax drowning in the Swamps of Sadness <laughs> scene. And you, you got to watch the scene of... Eridge, go watch again the scene of the rock biter crying about how he couldn't save his friends. It was much more right. sad than your sleeping mind can remember. Uh-huh. <laughs> you motherfucker. Uh, anyway, that's uh, I think that's all we have for the never-ending story. This is one of the all-time longest episodes of Is It Kino? But yeah, when, probably. when you're diving into a passion project like this, you really you gotta you gotta be yeah. nice and long. That's what the people want. You they should like just it. title this Monkey Explains the Never Ending <laughs> Story. And, and yeah, then you, you really memorized it so well. You, you've seen it so many times. Uh, it's, yeah, I just, I just watched it again really a few days ago. The narrator and you just retelling it. It's amazing. I, I do wish they didn't ruin its legacy by following it up like a, a cash grab with two horrible, mm-hmm. shitty movies. Which, which we haven't seen, right? Um, no. I, I, I haven't seen them, but I've read a lot about them, and it sounds oh, like just. Nobody from the creative team could have been involved because they destroy everything that was set up. There's, It's just a horrible well, nightmare cash grab. It just becomes nothing more than a stupid, stupid kids movie. Well, now we definitely have to watch it. I mean, damn, how could you possibly take the reviewers so serious and not even watch the movie? I would never do such a thing. I, I would never believe the reviewers, not for well, one second. Yeah, I mean, Florian, I mean, uh, Erich is uh, going to depart from this show in about a month. So maybe after mm-hmm. he's gone, you and I could uh, dive into Never Ending Story 2 and 3, and I'll probably gouge my eye to, eyes out like Oedipus and, <laughs> and fucking walk off to oh, a mountain no. to live alone. Wait, is that Oedipus? You sure? Yeah, he, he yeah. gouged out his eyes because he fucked his mom. Oh, wow. And killed his father. Yeah. Well, oh, that, yeah. that's not so bad. We all want to kill our fathers. Don't well, we? he must have <laughs> killed the father first. Otherwise, yeah. uh, he wouldn't have managed blindly. If I recall, I understand. his father was asking for it. They got into a fight, okay? So it's it's not his fault. Yeah, they got into a fight over fucking his mother. Makes sense. No, no. This is long before he even met his mother. <laughs> wow. How does he manage? Yeah, I guess uh, that makes sense. Erich, what you were going to say? I don't understand how, like, if somebody prophecies to you, you are going to fuck your mother and kill your father. <laughs> How you like then go on to kill a bunch of people and fuck a bunch of people. Yeah, I would never have sex again. <laughs> especially after you don't know that it's your mother, essentially. Like, yeah, it's like, ah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to go have sex with this woman who's 20 years older than me, just in case. Yeah. Like, what the fuck right. are you doing? Only fuck Maybe virgins. Like milk. Yeah, even she, you, you, you're so in control over your senses. He, like when you went to the doctor and, and he told you you're too fat, you immediately <laughs> stopped eating all <laughs> fat altogether. Yeah. Floyd, yeah, there, what there, the there, fuck? There, there, there was no, no, <laughs> no desire to eat from that point. You, you just put your well-being first. From if a on. if a known soothsayer who has a record of <laughs> making predictions tells you you are going to fuck your mother, I would not have sex again just to be but, safe. But these known doctors, they, they tell you that you need to, <laughs> to watch your weight. <laughs> I, I trust a soothsayer more than a doctor, my, my good sir. <laughs> now I can see why well, Erich doesn't want to be on this show anymore. You're a fucking meanie head. Oh say, man, I'm, I'm gonna ha- I'm gonna have such a, a compilation of fat jokes before before Endgame. It'll be no. It'll be glorious. For what purpose? <laughs> Just make fun of Trump. Come on. <laughs> no, Evans must have it. All right. He, he's 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 let go of his dreams. He's forgotten his fantasies, and now the, <laughs> the darkness is consuming. No, Evans, don't let the nothing it. get you. <laughs> Don't become a nothing and become one who teaches. Only oh, yeah. those who do not do teach. Yes. The nothing is going to consume Erich, and that's why he can't be on the show anymore. We need to give him a new name so that he can live. Yeah. Moon Man! 
fuck. Oh my god, you I should become get... Moon Man! Make me into the racist Moon Man. Yes! <laughs> Here it's, if, if you just do a Moon Man song, you will not be able to teach anymore, and then you can stay on the show. Oh, God. <laughs> moon Man, Moon Man, Black Lives Matter. And then you say... <laughs> Uh, I don't know. The next line of the song is Moon Man <laughs> saying... He doesn't know if Black Lives Matter, damn. The, the, guy, the guy tells Moon Man Black Lives Matter, and then Moon Man, in what I find to be very offensive, replies with, They're worth less than fecal matter! Disgusting! <laughs> Erich, how could you say that? Yeah, Erich, You can't rhyme matter with matter. <laughs> Moon Man can. <laughs> That's your problem. <laughs> he's, he's rhyming lives matter with fecal matter. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody in the chat said based moon rich. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's enough Probably. of this uh that's enough of this craziness. Uh <laughs> that's the never ending story, one of my favorite movies. Much better than E Rich's favorite movie, First Reformed, I have to imagine. I was gonna say you haven't seen it, so you can't actually say that. <laughs> Damn. Um I mean E Rich, this is uh this is your announcement of uh, your final month on the show. Do you have anything you want to say to the loyal listeners who are going to miss you after you depart? Uh, yeah, thanks everybody for listening to my bullshit. Uh, I don't regret anything I said to Asperger. Um, <laughs> actually, I should have been harder on Asperger. True. Probably. <laughs> if, if only I had known. Uh, I, I tried to make uh, by roads into uh, make, making peace with them, but I shouldn't have done that. No. Um, and uh, I've, I've enjoyed every second, or not every second. That would be a lie. Uh, <laughs> most seconds. <gasps> And Damn it, he hated some seconds. No. But we will, all three of us, be back in a few days to review Jordan Peele's new horror film, Us. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. When, are, when are you seeing oh, that? I, I think I'm going to go see that, like, tomorrow. I honestly have no idea. I might uh -oh. even see it soon without uh, my Yeah, girlfriend. you better. Yeah, it's yeah, great. Yeah. Well, perfect. Finally. Finally, Florian, Florian likes a movie directed by a black director. It, <laughs> it must be some top-level kino. Oh man, you haven't seen it yet? I can't wait. No, I haven't can't seen it. Can't wait to hear what you think of it. All right, so folks, we will see you next time with our review of Us, and then following up that uh, with uh, Shazam, I assume, and then maybe nothing until Erich's final episode, Avengers Endgame. Yep, well, tragic. There's Erich a few, Endgame. Erich Endgame. There's a few movies I could see if you want. Uh, I don't know, it's, it's going to be a, a long month. <laughs> Uh, you said Beach Bum in the chat. I was confused and now realized that's actually the name of a movie. I thought it yeah. was a reference to something else. Uh, to so a, that's coming to cinemas. To a maybe. person's uh, uh, gluteus maximus on a beach, the Beach Bum. Damn. Yeah, <laughs> great. So I, I guess you don't want to see it. <laughs> so, well, yeah, we, we'll probably do Beach Bum. I don't know. Four, wow. is it Kino? Possibly the longest episode yet. But uh, maybe not. I don't know. We might have had a two-hour episode. I have been Monkey Jones. And uh, I'm Iron Man, <laughs> And Iron Man Erich drowning my horse uh, in depression. And we will see <laughs> you guys next time. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Okay. Drowning uh, your horseshoes. Damn it. F, F in the chat for Erich. Yeah, tragedy. True tragedy. Mm. How could this happen? Okay, I stopped recording. The show is over, but uh, I'll still stick around and talk to the chat a little bit. You guys feel free to join me as long as you'd like. I, I gotta go toilet real quick, but I'll be back. Okay. Be right back. Erich, how does it feel to have this weight off your chest? We finally revealed our, our big secret. Our deep, dark secret. Yeah, yeah, it feels good. Um, I, I think the audience is handling it well. Lots of uh, people are sad. That well, makes just wait until you see the YouTube comments. This is only 100 people on YouTube. This is going to... With such a popular subject like Never Ending Story. YouTube? This is going on YouTube? They, they've all been going on YouTube. Oh, fuck. Okay. Uh, yeah, they, they have like thousands and thousands of views. I think uh, Captain Marvel episode has like 13,000 views on YouTube right now. Shit. Didn't know that. So I, I, I think the, uh, the audience reaction will be much more powerful over there when we have more than 100 people watching. Right. I right. think there be some pro broken hearts. Can you evaluate on this retirement? Are you going to retire from even your E Rich YouTube channel and your your Twitter yeah. and all of that? Oh yeah, I'm burning it all down. Why are you are you gonna delete anything? Or are you just gonna leave it all up? <laughs> I'm deleting it all. Really? You're, yeah. You're gonna delete the whole channel and all the content? Oh yeah. Wow, man, you're really like uh, scorching the earth with this. You gotta I guess you gotta clean yourself up for your career, huh? Absolutely. Wow. 
tragedy. That's the plan. Do, we, do I have to delete Is It Kino? No. no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just the episodes with Asperger on them. <laughs> Somebody says that the police probe is expected to be completed by then, and he has to leave the country. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, probably delete true. the Obama following. I'll probably just change my Twitter handle. Yeah, yeah. You, you can't before. lose that Obama follow. You, you put that on your resume, yeah. I think. Yeah, I really can't. <laughs> Obama follows me on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. got to remain the same. Yeah, you're, you're right. Okay, let's uh, turn back on all this shit I turned off. Uh, folks, I'm not going to stay and hang out with the chat for too long tonight because uh, I really got myself tired after screaming about the never-ending story for so long. But uh, we'll you, hang out. For you a literally, you could give a speech about the never-ending story if you I, wanted I, to. I, I kind of just did give like know, an hour-long speech. Yeah. Like you should tour the country and like give this talk. Well, I, I could just make a YouTube story. video about it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, how do I make the the bit text bigger? It got small again. I hate it when it does. Did that. everyone pay their respects to the Ebridge? No, they said mm -hmm. that they're glad he's leaving. Yeah. Oh, damn. Yeah. They said uh, Florian will be a, a great replacement. <laughs> they said finally. <laughs> We've been waiting for this to happen. Now, I, I don't know if you're telling me the truth here or if they said the complete opposite. Uh, hmm. Who can say? Who can say? <laughs> damn. So, for those of you who uh, don't really understand the what's, what's going on here, it's not that is it Kino is ending after the Avengers episode, it's just that our the the longtime co-host Erich is uh, retiring temporarily, perhaps if not forever, other than a few key movies. Right. Uh, and we're going to continue the show with Florian and I, and potentially oh. uh, throw in like a third guy as a guest, like maybe Asterios or something, every now and then. Maybe Asperger in, in five to twenty-five years. <laughs> oh wow! Ooh. Can't wait for that reunite. <laughs> what what movie could we possibly review when he gets out? <laughs> I guess we'll we'll talk about Get Out. Oh uh, yeah, well, I'm sure there'll be some some new, as he calls it, dead wife porn that he'll be really into. <laughs> He's gonna be oh, into God. new porn about men who kill their wives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that is Asperger evolving. Like he's going from <laughs> wanting to get revenge for his dead wife to taking <laughs> taking her out, out himself, on. and then yeah. he'll get revenge on himself. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, he was planning this all along. <laughs> oh my god. Trust nobody, not even revenge. yourself, and it's that kid pointing a gun at the back of his own head. Yeah. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> nice. Get Nick Ricada. Is he really a film buff? He says he has five kids. I don't think he goes to the movies that often. Too busy fucking, I guess. Time to find a new co host. That's what Florian is here for. He's been on the show for almost a year now. We've been grooming him to take the position. What's Let's do a performance review for Florian uh, yeah. before he takes over. Well, I, well, I, I actually, do... I actually feel that I'm better when there's two more guys oh, rather uh -huh. than just me and someone else because I don't know. It's I don't know if I have enough to say, but I guess we'll see. Hmm. It's gonna be it'll be a rocky road for sure. I I, I think right before the Avengers Endgame episode, we should do an Erich McCoy is he Kino episode where me and Florian <laughs> review you. A retrospective. Yeah. Oh God. And we should also oh, do yeah. drunk for that one. We also should do an episode of the Monkey Jones interview show, so we can yes. get that. You know, all, all of the the closure on E. Rich the Man before he departs from this earth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Damn. Rip. Yeah, and he just becomes just a a boy toy to his new girlfriend, and and all all former friendships will be ended. I think you're <laughs> overestimating the the relevance of his girlfriend in this departure. Florian. I don't know. Seems pretty pretty fishy. Just as somebody as, soon as, as he has a girlfriend, he's, <laughs> he's just breaking off his his former engagements. As somebody who <laughs> was going to become a teacher right before my monkey stuff took <laughs> off, let's just say I was in a very similar position uh, two and a half years ago, and I mm. I chose the road less traveled. We could say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I but, made my but, choice. Yeah. Yeah, but on top of that, you, you you keep saying that all you need to do is have a, a good YouTube career and you can find a girlfriend. But now that Everidge has a girlfriend, he doesn't need the YouTube career anymore. That's right. Once you get the girl from your internet fame, you can just abandon the internet. Yeah. yeah that's right. Waterman oh, in the chat. Waterman says, have we even confirmed that the girlfriend is real? No. Oh, yeah. We still need to do that. No, I've stalked E. Rich's Facebook. He never posts a picture of her. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think this girl exists. I think it's a lie. 
And you need to to come by by his house and need to find out. Yeah, I'm, I'm coming you need over. To spy on him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll look in the window. Well, she doesn't live with me, so well, she'll That'd come visit. To... She'll have to come visit one of these days. I'll camp outside your window. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Mumkey knew to bail out when he got an erection from a student. How dare you hatch wow. into that? <laughs> That's not why. That was irrelevant to my choice. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Tomas says Everidge won't introduce us because it is one of his students. That's not true. Oh, okay. It's not true. He said it. He it's said not it's true. Not. No. <laughs> I deny these allegations. The only the only thing yeah. he has taught her is uh, romantic love. Ooh, hello. Mm -hmm. yeah, he taught her a few things in the bedroom, but that's about it. You know what I'm saying? The ways of the world. <laughs> oh, he took her around the world, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Your like girlfriend is say. Tomas, is that true? Tomas. Who is that? Some Who's guy in the chat. Are you dating Tomas? I don't know who hmm. the fuck that is. Skumkey said you're dating Tomas. I don't know. Is that is I not don't true? Know that it's not Tomas person. Oh, okay, it's not Tomas. I just double checking. <laughs> you can never be too sure with these sorts of things. Yeah, anyone could be Irish's girlfriend. It could be literally anyone. <laughs> it could be. Maybe it's Michelle Obama, and that's why Ob Barack is following him. Barack has a cop oh, fetish no. all along. He's following it's finally him. come out. Shit, you guys <laughs> guessed it. Yeah, he's been getting cucked before even getting into this relationship. Amazing. Wow. <laughs> I forgot that we weren't on Discord because Discord was shitting out on us earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Around, How's the quality? I guess it didn't cut out for you, Rich. No, yeah, this, this sounded much better than, than the Discord usually does. Maybe you and I will, Florian, in the future, we'll just use Google Hangouts from now on. Why won't you use TeamSpeak, damn it? Because I'm, I'm not a boomer in 2002. I don't need TeamSpeak. Damn. Oh, my God, Erich is dating Mumkey's sister. He's getting my sloppy what? seconds. <laughs> oh, my God. Wait, your sloppy seconds. Yeah, I fucked my sister. You didn't get the shit. memo on that one? Shit. Yeah, there's lots of shit. We did anal as well. There's That's nothing bad. holy for up, Keezy. No. If, if it's a wet hole, hole, I'm going in, baby. <laughs> Even Jesus. baby, I guess. I just said baby. I don't know. Oh, no. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> That's going in a cringe compilation. <laughs> That's one bridge too far, jeez. <laughs> oh, I burned all the bridges long ago. I'm stuck on an <laughs> island of uh, of degeneracy at this point. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Damn. If, uh, you know how Jesus had his uh, hands nailed to the cross? I would fuck his hand holes at this point. Wow. Oh, yeah, that's, that's real bad. I'd say, holy Bible, not even as holy as Jesus' hands. Damn. You know that uh, Dio song, Holy Diver? For my church group, yeah. when I was in high school, I was going to do Holy Bible as a parody. Holy Bible! Uh, they It did not go well. They were not fans. Yeah, I bet. No. They, uh, they do, do, you know that, do you know that Goldfinger song, Handjobs for Jesus? <laughs> no, what that sounds fuck? awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's, it gives a whole new meaning to handjobs. Hmm. <laughs> How do you know any of this stuff, Lauren? Dude, Goldfinger is amazing. I, I sure hope I'm not confusing the band here. But it goes something like, oh god, I, I can't even remember. As soon as I said, <laughs> all right, if you love your neighbor like you love yourself, you gotta, you gotta do hand jobs for Jesus. Mm, I know, what? I am killing it. This might not be as good <laughs> as you uh, said it is. Oh, no, it's it's great. It's really rocking. Mm -hmm. Oh well. <laughs> okay, okay. Folks, I think that's gonna be the stream for the night. Mm -hmm. I I gushed about my one of my favorite movies and gave you all uh, my hot takes and my cold takes on why this is pure Kino. <laughs> and uh, these other guys were also here. Yep, <laughs> so I was I, here. I think it was. I can a, confirm. It was a very successful stream, and I look forward to seeing everybody crying in the comment section of the YouTube upload about E. Rich's future departure. We only have a month left. Uh, Avengers Endgame comes out a month from today, folks. Tragedy. True tragedy. Hell yeah. Now I have to make a new friend. He's happy to leave. Yeah. Damn it. Can you blame him? I, I wish I could quit this fucking show. <laughs> I, uh, I, it wouldn't exist without me. I have to keep doing it. Damn. 
It'll just be me alone <laughs> reviewing the funny. movies. I should give you access to my uh, stream key so you can like stream Kino alone on my account. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Forever funny. alone, Kino. <laughs> All the kids' movies you see, Florian. Great. You fucking like review The Hobbit every day. <laughs> Just yeah. stream 24 hours talking about how much you love The Hobbit. Of course. All right, folks, that's enough for the stream. Uh, I'll see you. Uh, I think tomorrow night I'm going to do the, the Hunger Games with all the monkey characters. And you, you guys are in it. Huh? You, uh, you know, there's oh, like really? those, yeah. those Brant Steel Hunger Games simulators where you like put in all your own characters. Oh, oh I think awesome. uh, Erich and Florian are like District 4. You guys are together. So we'll see. Oh, hell yeah. We'll see how you guys fare against me, Sheepover, Asperger, Digibro, and all the, the usual uh, uh, cast of characters. Well, like I'm sure that. we'll be the ones who, who in the end, manage to somehow both survive, even though it's against the rules, just like in the movie. Yeah, yeah and then we, you and Erich will eat the poison love. berries. <laughs> yeah, you guys yeah, will fall in love. We feed each other poison berries. Mm, beautiful. Alrighty, <laughs> uh, I'm ending the stream. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.